So I was watching. I'm I'm actually very uh, very excited today because I was watching some um, <clears throat> some of my heroes. I was watching a video by Lee Camp, and what what I what I what I think we're waiting for is sort of what Sticks Hexenhammer talks about. A he uses the term a paradigm shift in consciousness, and I think. Based on what I saw with Lee Cav, I think we're starting to see a turning point in new media where people are not afraid to, they're, they're, they're hitting moments of clarity. Like like uh, in, in rock and rolls, people say, well, how did punk rock evolve on two or three different continents all at once? Did the British start it? Did the Americans start it? Right. You try to figure out well who's who who invented punk rock, right? But really in Britain it popped up at it popped up and then in, in New York it popped up. Those people were never communicating. So it's a it's collective consciousness that comes together and starts to see clearly. And I think that that's what Lee Camp has his finger on. Now I'll take I'll take the other side of it. Lee Camp did a piece and he tried to evaluate Bernie Sanders' rally, his uh, news conference. So, not news, it's a, what do you call it? Or he dressed the, you know, his town hall. Bernie Sanders did a town hall with, with Elizabeth Warren <laughs> and Michael Moore, right? And, and what Bernie was doing was what Bernie always does, which is talk about the problem. Then come in wealth inequality and the oligarchy and, and, uh, how Washington doesn't represent the people, right? We know all that. That's that's the symptom, right? And then, so in the new media, we're, we're saying, okay, well, what's what's the Lee Camp is putting his finger on the problem, saying, oh, it's capitalism, right? That's what Bernie doesn't understand. That capitalism is always doomed. No, that's not that's not the the fact, right? Capitalism, by definition, is private institutions that control the economy. Like like if I want to open up a store or someone down the street wants to open up a store, that's you can, it's free market, right? That's that's not a a failed idea whatsoever. What's failed is monopoly, oligarchy, plutocracy. Right? Those words, right? Those are the words that when 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 it gets to the point where the, the ruling elite or the one percent is then manipulating the government to change laws so that they can continue to accrue wealth at the expense of the workers right now has this historically has this any precedence has this ever have have we ever been in a place uh, like we are now where the media is totally fake and the courts fail to to work uh, of course, the, the the example everybody likes to look at the example of the '60s, all oh, the big the big cultural revolution. But the real revolution that we need to look at right now, it shouldn't be a surprise. It's FDR's New Deal, right? Now, you say New Deal, oh, you know, Bernie Bernie Sanders was looking back at the New Deal, saying that's how you do it: power in the unions and 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 uh, government intervention, job creation, and all that stuff. Yeah, that. That, that is, yes, that is a possibility. But here's the difference, right? The reason why the New Deal came about was that the, the markets crashed, right? It was the, the Great Depression of the 20s, right? The markets crashed. They freeze up. Banks couldn't pay. The, they, 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 they only had 5% of the money uh, that uh, that uh, they were holding <laughs> for the people, they would take their money and they gambled in the stock market, and then uh, the you had a you had a run on the banks, and people couldn't get their money out of the bank, right? So people got screwed, right? And the markets crashed, right? In two thousand eight, we were at the identical. See, that's the pinnacle of oligarchy, right? It's not sustainable, right? And then it crashes. The markets go up, up, up. Plut plut plutocrats, I hate that word. Plutocrats, right? The, the the wealthy elite have so much money, but it's not sustainable because they get lazy and they and then it, it crashes. But here's the difference: in in 08, right? In in the in the the first, the latter part of the country with FDR, when FDR rose up to correct the problem, and when he was elected in 1933, a hundred years, a hundred days into his 
presidency, he had a solution, and that was what he called the New Deal, where he instituted work programs and, and plans and all that stuff. <clears throat> the difference in 2008 is that people, f that the, the market was not allowed to crash. Instead, the, 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 the ruling elite got bailed out, right? So you remember Obama had inherited this mess, right? And he was, you know, a 40-year-old guy. He had no business savvy whatsoever. And what did they do? Goldman Sachs surrounded him, right? You had, uh, uh, what was his name? G uh, Geithner? Remember Geithner as Secretary of uh, Finance? His tr Treasury Secretary, Geithner? And these guys were all C they they were all Goldman Sachs creeps, right? So they bamboozled Obama into the bailouts and there was seven hundred billion dollars allocated to fixing the banks. And then you saw the largest transfer of wealth in the history of America where all the money went into the hands of the people that shouldn't should have been allowed to fall. Right. So were the bailouts valid and necessary no they should have been allowed to fall because then we wouldn't have been in this mess right now the oligarchy has so much control and so much power that it's 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 seemingly unbreakable at this point right so just a couple of statistics like in the in the great depression right there was there was a uh, documented 25 percent unemployment right in this country right now we're probably at that number okay right people don't believe it but because they look at the fake number the uh the un the official unemployment number which is somewhere around four or five percent and then they every once in a while they they tick it down a little bit oh now it's it's 3.8 percent or 3.7 percent see uh, the 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 unemployment rate is it's not accurate because it doesn't it doesn't account it only accounts for people on the unemployment rolls it doesn't account for people who stop looking for work right it's a fake number the number of of unemployed people in america is probably much higher it's probably in the 20 to 25 percent range which means we are in a depression we had the recession from 2008 where this this transfer of wealth uh the you know the the, the top the top one percent got bailed out and everybody else fell into the you know, object poverty, right? That's where we're at right now. Wake up. See it. That's what's going on right now, right? That's why people are pissed off, right? System doesn't work anymore for them, right? So by uh, 2000, by 1936, FDR was able to create all these, uh, you know, government programs to bail us out, right? Because the banks had already crashed, so there was really no resistance from them because they were already impotent, right? Right now, they're, 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 they're still very powerful. Why? Because 2008 bailouts, they weren't allowed to fall. All of the, it was the same exact scenario where the markets exploded upwards and then it was unsustainable. It crashed, right? So rather than letting them fall, they were bailed out. So it's socialism for the, for the wealthy, right? And it's, you know, uh, everybody else, good luck, right? What else do I want to say about this? So, so, so what's the solution, right? So there we are. Here we are now in a situation where we have all of the ramifications, all of the symptoms of a, a, a depression, right? Where the oligarchy now controls the courts, the oligarchy controls the media, the oligarchy controls the politicians who are paid off to give them more and more and more breaks. Remember, in the bailouts, why does Nancy Pelosi have you know $100 million net worth? Why does uh, Barney Frank have millions and millions of dollars retired in, in, in Connecticut or whatever the hell he's from, right? Why do all these these politicians have all this money? I thought they only make uh, $175,000 a year. What happened? It's all bribe money. It's they take the they took the money in 08, right? Bankers bankers were looking at jail time for sinking the economy, for for breaking SEC laws. So what do they do? They pay off the politicians. They paid everybody off, and they got a, they got a, they got out of it. And they got not only did they get out of it, they got everything. The all the market, all the all the all the wealth in the nation was shifted into their pockets, and and they were told, good, you know, now you gotta. Now you got to help us. <laughs> you're handing the money over. You handed the money over to thieves. You handed the 
the the the, the control over to the thieves, right? So what is the what is the solution now? Now that we have, it's not. See, the, the other thing is you can't look back at the New Deal and say, "Well, that's how they did it, right?" So we got to do it again, right? Uh, you know, unions and and uh, labor, 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 labor. You know, all the, all the things that FDR did. FDR gave us Social Security Act, right? And that that was a good thing. But these things are all in place, right? What we need to do is. We need to create the crash. That's what it keeps saying. That's the solution, Mr. Camp. It's not democracy. See, democracy democracy works, right? It, capitalism, it, it works, right? These things work, right? It's that when what you're saying is accurate, when it when it peaks, it becomes a monopoly. However, it only peaks because of the corruption, right? It peaks because of the corruption, the 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 the, the holding, uh, the, the holding of power into a very uh, into a very few people. So so the solution is is still the same. You have to bring on the crash. How do you do it? It's easy. Like I said, it's not petitioning the courts. It's not electing officials. Although it could be the the uh, uh, again, Bernie Sanders represented, he gave people hope, not not the fake hope that Obama, hope, Mr. Hope did, Mr. Obama hope gave, but he, he gave he gave economic hope and clarity to people, and people responded to it, right? Bernie Sanders was 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 the people's choice. He would have been the president of the United States had the Democratic Party not bamboozled him had not cheated, right? That's a fact. Anybody who says that Bernie wouldn't have beat Trump is it's it's unrealistic. Bernie had the 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 support of 40% of the Democratic Party, all the new millennial all the millennials. Everybody would have it, it would have been a landslide. Trump is is a is a formidable opponent. I don't discount that at all, but Trump's message is is old and antiquated and 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 uh, you know Ronald Reagan is shit doesn't this shit doesn't work. The, the idea of trickle down economics and that, you know, us big guys in suits are gonna figure it out and <clears throat> we're gonna build walls and give the death penalty to drug dealers. This fucking this guy's an idiot. Right? In 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 many respects he's a fool, right? All right, so credit card debt. If you have credit card debt, this has to be a comrades, this has to be a a movement in the direction of resistance right but the resistance is not going out into the into the streets with a with a picket sign the resistance is hey today no when they were not going to pay the credit cards right and if all of the all of the people of the united states decided that that credit card debt is now over right we want a new deal okay wipe away the balances balances are gone right then you 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 then the banks are are put on notice that they can't. What are they going to do? Lock everybody up? What are they going to do? Destroy everybody's credit rating? What are they going to do? They they, they 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 become powerless over it, right? They become they're powerless over the masses. See, that's what people fail to realize that the, that we are the, we're powerful in numbers, right? So, property mortgages, people that own properties and and feel like they're being, uh, you know. They're being, they're, the mortgage just keeps going up, the interest rates, and and then and then they miss a payment, and then the bank comes in and takes their property, and now the the there's what a million empty homes in the United States, and there's homeless people, and there's a million empty homes, and 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 and, and foreclosures and all this stuff, right? Take the take the mortgage, take the mortgage papers, take the papers, go throw in the fucking garbage, right? And then and then take the first payment and buy yourself a nice rifle and. Hang it in the window, and if any banker comes to take your home, you tell them whose property they're standing on. That's how you do it. All right? So student loans. Millennials, oh, <laughs> I can't have <allow> student loans. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so, they're so de de devastated over student loans. Tell, take the student loan, throw it in the fucking garbage, right? Student loan is over. Don't pay the loans, right? A new deal. Right, you have to bring the market to its knees. A crash, before you can fix it. Right, if you're given all the power and all the 
all the courts and the legal system and the and the the, the Senate and the, the Congress and the the executive branch they, they still have all of the power right until and because why because the oligarchy is feeding them the oligarchy is all that money is being fed right right to them and it's going around the people all that money the tax evasion doesn't you know all the corporations that don't pay tax right that money is going directly to the politicians to keep the system in place, right? And then when it falls, what do they do? They come to you and say, oh, bail us out, right? Well, all your money goes to bailing, bailing the people that are robbing us, right? It doesn't work, right? So you got to bring them to their knees, right? Tax debt. Right? They have tax debt. We're not going to pay that tax, right? So, you know, over, right? Yeah, sure, people that work for a living, see, this, the government has that figured out. They take your money out of your check and then they <clears throat> put it over there, right? And they hold on to it. <laughs> but corporations don't have that. They don't, they, oh, we'll, we'll handle our own taxation at the end of the year. But you can't do that, right? See, the system is rigged, right? They're not paying a nickel in tax, trillions of dollars that's supposed to hit the real economy and, and bail out the real economy and, 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 and help people prosper, right? Create the job creation and uh, opportunity, right? It's not there anymore, right? So I think that's all I wanted to say. I think that that I, although I agree with my my, uh, I, I I hope that we are at the precipice of a uh, a, a, a you know an awakening uh, in a sense where people are starting to come together and realize that the problem is not. Um, look, the main sh what I'm trying to say is that the mainstream media is still running false narratives. We don't have a media, right? And we have to uh, we have to come to the conclusion that we don't have a media because of the problems that we're talking about, which is that the the, the oligarchs, the the ruling elite, have purchased the media and silenced it by what they put. You know, they took people like uh, you know all the CNN guys, right, you know, Rachel Maddow and Wolf Blitzer, and they put him, they gave him $6 million a year, and they put him in a penthouse in Manhattan, and they just read off the, the teleprompter, right? That's not, it's not news, it's not journalism, it's not, it's not media, it doesn't help people, right? So that's the situation of that. So, but most of America still looks at it for information. What do they get? Stormy Daniels tits and Donald Trump's penis, right? Or, or, or the, uh, of creating a fake narrative around Russia to keep the war machine going, right? Create, start a war, right? Start a war. It's fucking sick, right? It's a sick, we're living in sick times. So, but what we have to do is we have to start to, to address the, the actual, stop paying attention to that and address the actual problem, which is not capitalism, which is not democracy. It's, it's, the, it's the abolishment of the oligarchy. Right? And the way you do that is you have to bring them to their knees. You have to force them out. They're not gonna they're not gonna regulate themselves, Bernie Sanders. Oh, how are you gonna how are you gonna how are you gonna how are you gonna break up the banks? Oh they'll, they'll self break up, they'll self regulate. <laughs> no, they don't do that. Right? You have to bring them to their knees. You have to bring them down. Right. So so that's my rant today. I call this one um a new deal for American people and um and it's for us to uh, it's for us to decide. You know, I, I can't I can't continue. You know, I can't continue to just come on here and talk about oh, it's, the system is so corrupt and the FBI and 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 then there's someone sitting to the right of the president. Q, he's gonna he's whispering the answers and the you know this is all such fucking bullshit, right? It's all bullshit. You can't live in the bullshit anymore, right? So if there is a you know a, a creative paradigm shift I, I you know i'm just uh, for whatever reason i hope i'm part of it i hope that my my you know messaging right here is something that resonates with uh people and uh, you know my name is marcus conti i'm a youtube journalist former plaintiff and conti verse dsny <laughs> pro se plaintiff so uh if you could subscribe definitely subscribe help me you know share if you like the, the commentary if you like the direction that i'm heading in with this kindly share it share that drop the link you could share it down below you hit the share button and then you 
get the link and then drop it uh, drop it elsewhere on Facebook and let people see you know the the messaging you know and also comment because I read your comments I read all the comments I comment on the comments I'm commenting on the comments right now right now you know and um, that's what that's the direction I go you comment I, I it directs me right so, so uh, thank you for letting me share have a wonderful day peace out